Fabian, fantastic to see you on Real Vision. Happy to be here. Um, look, there's a lot to talk about, but first, let's get a bit of your history because you've got a super interesting history that I think will frame a lot of your thinking now. So if you can go back in time a bit um, and give us a bit of your background and, and how you got to where you are today. I mean, I guess this all started out when I was uh, uh, like you know, quite young, getting interested in computers and then uh, build websites when I was 14. Uh, you know, there was a time when the internet took off. It was the 90, 90 something. Um, and it kind of like, I mean, I, I think I was part of the growing the internet, you know, just like experiencing this, trying like the first websites and, you know, AOL CDs with free internet minutes. You know, I have been part of that time too. Um, and basically I have been uh, doing web development and stuff and coding on the side all the time while at the same time I started media design. So I was more on the, you know, trying out creative side in the study field, but I like to teach myself how to code and all of these things uh, on the side. And that was kind of my main interest. And I kind of got into the whole blockchain thing in 2013, uh, March 2013. I read somewhere, Canadian wants to sell a house in Bitcoin, thought, oh, wow, somebody wants to sell a house in something I've never heard. That must be interesting. So, and it, it was one of these really strange, like, links that are actually almost like, look like a scam fake link that you don't click, right? It looks like a something that's not really true. And anyway, like this kind of brought me into the rabbit hole pretty quickly because this was actually before the first bubble in 2013. So Bitcoin went from $10 to $260, right? Like within March, basically. And I came in literally before that. So I got the whole excitement around Bitcoin and so on. And I think it's also, it was a great time to get in because this was before any altcoin. So I kind of got to experience the whole altcoin mania, starting with Litecoin in June and then, you know, NXT and at some point Mastercoin and all of the other random projects, Aurora coin that also <laughs> existed, <laughs> still exists. Uh, all of these other altcoins, I always found the ones which actually coded their own thing and made something from scratch more interesting than just the simple copy and paste of Bitcoin. Um, and I really like this idea of like Mastercoin uh, building something on top of an existing protocol, like piggybacking on the security of Bitcoin and then like you do your own protocol. Even though they made the Mastercoin token and then after a few months they figured out, oh, it doesn't have any purpose. I guess we got that a few times after that, uh, projects creating tokens and then later figuring out what's the, well, like, what's the, what's the use really of that token? Like, doesn't make any sense in the first place. So basically 2014, I got to know the people from Ethereum. So I already knew about Ethereum, like once they start, when they started it. Um, but in 2014, I, um, got to meet them. I heard they want to opening an office in Berlin. And this was at the time where the project didn't have any money. So funny enough, literally the next day when I met them and heard they want to open an office, they made the crowd sale and they had uh, collected uh, 31,000 Bitcoin, biggest crowd in history at the time. It took a few more months because then to like arrange themselves, create foundation, blah, blah, blah. Um, funny enough, then I got an email from a recruiter looking for a C++ developer for the company Ethereum. So I thought, like, wow, great. I'm not C++ developer, but I see they are now set up to look for people. <laughs> great. Let me go there again. So I went there. Um, and at the time I was writing a book or actually I already wrote a book about Meteor.js, which is a JavaScript framework um, explaining how you build full stack applications. And mainly these were applications running fully in the browser. So they're running fully in the front end. Don't, they technically don't really need a back end. Um, full stack was is both at the same time. This was this whole like movement of single page apps, um, how we called them at the time. And when I got to Ethereum, I realized, oh, that's super cool here. Um, they want to build this network and they have figured out how to build the nodes, but nobody really thinks about how to, uh, you know, make this first show it to users, what this can do, but also show it to developers. And I think. Uh, I think this was kind of was, what was missing, and I felt I have this, I could bring this in. Um, at the same time, Alex van der Zander, he was the UX guy at Ethereum. He had this um, idea about the Mist browser. So he wanted to build this Web3 browser. And he made this YouTube video 
that's still like there out there, out there on YouTube explaining the Mist browser concept. And literally, uh, we still have to do a lot of these things that he explained in this in this video. Uh, and actually, we will now. But he had this concept and he wanted to build it, but he couldn't really like do it by himself. So then he heard, oh, there's this guy who can make full stack applications. Hey, why we don't get him in? And that's how, when he reached out to, to Jeffrey, who built the Go Ethereum client, and said, hey, let him get into our team. So I had this very interesting um, place, basically. I was part of the Go Ethereum team. So basically part of the Amsterdam team, technically speaking, but I was sitting in right. Berlin in the C++ team, which was run yeah. by Gavin. So I was, I was literally between the two teams like hired by one team, but sitting in the other, <laughs> which was a very interesting place because we kind of saw, I saw the conflicts and then I had chances to connect uh, the two. So basically when I uh, uh, was part of this team, um, um, I kind of got in like very early and, and I had this role of what we called a lead D app developer. I mean, actually this is just the <laughs> title that I gave myself really. <laughs> It was an interesting position because on the one hand, we had to literally figure out how Ethereum works, right? Because it was completely novel. How do you build smart contracts? How do you do any of this stuff? At the same time, build tools and define how you interact with it as a developer. But at the same time, then also build the interfaces and the apps that people can use. And we built the Mist browser, first Web3 browser that had like, I think Alex like summed it up at some point. It had like 15 million downloads. Um, it didn't even have a website. There was really just the GitHub release page. You had to figure out how to get there and like download it. But it was like the DAO and there was lots of things happened that like people needed to use the Mist browser basically. It was also the first app in the Mist browser was the Ethereum wallet. Um, and the Ethereum wallet was like the way how you interact with first Ether, later smart contracts, and then later also tokens. So I, I got like really fortunate enough on all the important places and I kind of had my hands in a lot of the, the early work um, that has to do with like, you know, how we do things on Ethereum today. So, so in that list is like, I worked then on Web3.js, which is the most used JavaScript library in the blockchain space. I then overtook that project uh, when uh, Gavin and the others moved out to Parity or ETHCore, how it was called initially. I overtook Web3.js, made the 1.0 that everybody's using today still um, I defined lots of things, like I defined also the Ethereum provider. That's how like a Brave browser or how MetaMask talks to a D app. Um, and then in 2015, I proposed ERC20 out of a proposal from uh, Vitalik initially and some discussion in a wiki page. Um, that's probably what people know me more for, even though there was least work, the least work I did. <laughs> it's always the case, right? It's always the case. But I have been really, like, interesting enough, like, on the intersection of, like, doing a lot of the early work and um, defining a lot of the early things and then also kind of also seeing, like, how a standard in a flexible blockchain like Ethereum, right, if you can build anything, like, how impactful standards can be. It literally defined the whole years after, still defines everything. So like suddenly there was like ICOs and then there were like all the conferences were about tokens and every project had something with tokens made up. And it became this massive token mania. And people really thought, oh, Ethereum, that's tokens, right? Even though this is just a tiny use case, something you can do in Swift smart contracts. And yes, it became popular. Um, and I think like we are kind of like, we just, I mean, we're discovering now a new use case. Now it's NFTs. Okay. People realize our oh, tokens can not only represent money, they can also represent other things. I guess with DeFi, people learned that, oh, smart contracts can talk to each other and we can now make a token that like links, locks in here and produces something else that talks to something else that somehow, you know, intertwines with whatever. So it's kind of like, it's almost like, uh, the public is learning slowly what Ethereum can do as a protocol, <laughs> like step by step, always introducing a new use case where then people realize, oh, that's cool. You know, I can do all of these different things. Um, yeah, and that's kind of where we are today. Um, but at the same time, still being very early in, in this whole uh, endeavor, discovering what like this technology does really. So talk me through Luxor and what you're doing there, why you did it and what you think the opportunity set is. And we'll get to talk about a lot of this because I'm, you know, very into the social tokens idea and token economies and 
how the integration of NFTs and how all of this comes together, I think. But so talk us through that. Why, why did you start the business? What was your idea? And what is it you're doing now? I personally wouldn't call it a business. I would call it a project. Um, so when I was at Ethereum, like we defined a lot of the early ways of how we do things. And I mean, technically, I could have probably worked for the Ethereum Foundation for the next 10 years. And there's lots of things you can define. But um, I, I guess when Marjorie, uh, my partner, came up with uh, this idea, hey, why we don't put like fashion on the blockchain? It was the initial idea. I thought like, oh, wow. Yeah, lots of people are thinking about this kind of feels boring. Like, I don't know why I want to put anything on the blockchain. I'm pretty, pretty good at Ethereum, what I'm doing. It's already fun enough. I can do whatever I want, you know, I can just make a shit up and then like people either use it or not. But I mean, then I think I really like, I really, really like this idea of like creating an ecosystem and also creating an ecosystem for a new set of use cases. Um, and I mean, in the beginning, it was just these ideas like, okay, let's create an ecosystem for like maybe less financial use cases, more like for, for creative and lifestyle use cases. And the interesting thing is at the time it was all about DeFi. So it was all about like, you know, money, Lego, uh, more money, money, <laughs> money. Uh, and it was very financially focused really. Um, and the, the, the interesting thing is like, you know, what I really realized because the most popular projects in blockchain are blockchains. Right, it's a bunch of tokens. I haven't seen many successful tokens um, that really make a lot of sense, um, but blockchains do, right? Because you can't take the token out of the blockchain. Uh, even though there were some clever people in Wired magazine t claiming that in 2016, it's not true. <laughs> like without block, without the token, the blockchain doesn't work. At least not decentralized. Um, so this really made sense, but I also realized that actually every blockchain forms its own community, right? There's a certain people, of, a certain group of people like entrepreneurs and whatever that are attracted to a certain network. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.